the overflying uh, spotter plane located the first located the wreckage of the small plane. There wasn't much left of it. Uh, but then the Mexican uh, aviators received a, su a surprise because there was an, another object a short distance away from where the plane had crashed. And this second object was very strange looking. It was a silver disc. It was nearly intact. And uh, it was gleaming, sitting there in the, in the, uh, in the, on the desert floor, gleaming in the sun. And they called it in. The U.S. military and U.S. intelligence services along the Texas-Mexico border were listening in to the recovery efforts on uh, the radio transmissions of the recovery efforts uh, that the Mexicans had mounted. And they uh, heard the, uh, the uh, Mexican uh, pilot identify the second crash location of, of this strange object. So a dispatch was made of, of a team of soldiers, we think out of the Army, Army base in, in Ojinaga, Chihuahua, which is along the border with Texas. And they head on uh, north northwest out of Ojinaga, headed toward uh, the side where, this, where the spotter plane is, is leading them to. And uh, so the story goes, as the U.S. is listening uh, from the Texas-Mexico border to their conversations over the radio, the Mexican soldiers report finding a small silver disc about uh, 16 feet in diameter. And it's a classic uh, saucer-shaped, uh, metallic silver saucer-shaped object. It, had, it was mostly intact. There were two damage points. There was one uh, small dent, and there was a, uh, a small puncture uh, on the disc. But other than that, it seemed uh, virtually intact. So they loaded it up on one of their cargo trucks, uh, along with uh, all the, re the, the few pieces of wreckage that they were able to gather together from the plane itself and they uh, headed back to base. Well, they had made it an hour, maybe two at the most, when, and, and they were still under uh, being uh, watched by U.S. surveillance uh, through the use of uh, military spy satellites and overflying aircraft, when suddenly um, the convoy of Mexican soldiers just stopped in the middle of the Chihuahuan Desert, and none of the vehicles were moving anymore, none of the trucks were moving. So the U.S. ordered more surveillance, and they took close-up pictures from the Keyhole spy satellite that we had back in the 70s, and they sent uh, a jet to overfly the uh, Mexican convoy site. And the pictures that they got back were absolutely amazing because they, it showed that several Mexican soldiers were just lying, their bodies just strewn on, across the sand. Uh, some of them hanging halfway out of their vehicles, others just slumped over in their vehicles. So obviously something had happened that was serious. And while all this was going on, uh, there had already been a, a command given to uh, for uh, U.S. recovery team, uh, incursion team, uh, to be assembled in El Paso. And they were prepared and ready to go should, should they have be needed for a recovery operation involving the U.S. So after the, uh, the situation happened with the Mexican soldiers uh, going down for some unknown reason, uh, the, Mex the U.S. recovery team was at that point green-lighted. They were transported by helicopters very quickly from El Paso, which is only about 200, 200 to 300 miles away from where this happened, left by air. Uh, so they were very quickly transported out to the location of this uh, crash, and uh, or rather of, of this uh, recovery attempt by the Mexican military. And what they uh, what they found out, uh, you know, when they arrived there a short while later, uh, they determined that uh, of course the U.S. soldiers were dressed in biohazard gear and were prepared for. Uh, the possibility of being exposed to some kind of toxin, um, either chemical or biological. So what they found there was that the Mexicans were all dead, and apparently 
within an hour or so after being exposed to the wreckage of the downed UFO, um, some agent that they had been exposed to uh, had uh, consequently proven to be lethal to them. And this is a very interesting story to you that we can explore further as the program goes along because we've spoken to a couple of people who have uh, who say that they were part of military uh, crash retrieval teams like this. And uh, we received a lot of information about what goes on to protect these soldiers who go out to uh, recover an object that has come, come in through the Earth's atmosphere, whether it's one of ours or somebody else's. Uh, after the recovery was, was uh, the Mexican recovery failed, of course, the U.S. arrived, uh, determined that the Mexicans had been killed by some sort of possible chemical or biological exposure. The object, the, the mysterious disc-shaped uh, object, was loaded on to one of the large cargo helicopters that had come along on the U.S. Uh, incursion team. and. Uh, it was taken out back across the river to Texas, and the remaining uh, members of the U.S. team gathered up all the evidence that remained there in the Chihuahuan Desert, and they basically exploded it. Uh, we think the reason for that is because of the potential threat of some sort of biological contamination and at this location within 30 miles of the Texas border. Uh, if you had some kind of a widespread contamination that would easily have crossed over into large population centers such as El Paso, Texas, Midland, Texas, uh, the city of Chihuahua, only about 100 miles away. So there was a, you know, there was justifiable um, danger there at this location. So um, after the object was returned to the U.S., it was eventually taken to Atlanta, Georgia. When we first read through the report, we were puzzled about that. Why Atlanta and why not, you know, some of the other military bases that over the years have been identified as being places where crashed UFOs supposedly have been taken. Uh, but then we hit upon the idea that um, uh, Atlanta was well known in the early 70s for the uh, biological contamination, uh, biological labs of the uh, Center for Disease Control. In fact, it was the world's leading center for isolating and doing research on uh, lethal biological agents. So uh, that's a possibility. Of course, that's speculative on our part. But uh, the destination being mentioned in the uh, Chihuahua crash document is, uh, is Atlanta, Georgia, which it was uh, coincidentally, either coincidentally or not, we don't know for sure, but it was the location of the world's leading lab for uh, uh, handling biologically contaminated materials. 